Boy, that escalated quickly. I mean, that really got out of hand fast. It jumped up a notch. It did, didn't it? Yeah, I stabbed a man in the heart. I saw that. Brick killed a guy. What is up? It's the Fit Gear Hunter here with an updated video for the Phoenix 7 versus the Garmin Epics. So, boy oh boy, was there some reaction to my last battery video and battery testing video, lots of different responses. So I do wanna say right out of the gate and clarify, I did not mean to misspeak if I did on the video about having the backlight always on on the Phoenix 7. It was simply set to 60% brightness because that's how I test all the Phoenix watches. And I'll explain that in a second, but it was set to 60% brightness with wrist raise gesture on, but not always on. So it had a timeout set to it. I did realize that my timeout was set for 30 seconds, so longer than normal. So I have hard reset the Phoenix 7 and restarted testing of 28 hours in. I just wanted to give an update video. As soon as this video goes live, the other video comes down so that everybody can hopefully be happy again. Um, I got a lot of questions about why do I need a backlight at all? Why do I choose 60%? And I wanted to explain a little bit of that and then we'll just re-talk about the testing parameters and we'll look at the results after 28 hours and a couple of workouts. So why do I have a backlight at all? Well, because I need a backlight to be able to see the screen of the watch throughout the day. You know, a lot of you or some have said that they don't need a backlight at all. They don't turn it on until after sunset and that is great, but I find it to be incredibly dim if there's no backlight illuminating. Um, why 60%? And I want you to think about this. I have not yet seen a video reviewer that has done a backlight test or done a, I'm sorry, a battery test with the backlight other than just the stock brightness at 20%. So it comes out of the gate at 20%. So I'm doing 60%, partially because we live in a world of AMOLED watches and brighter watches and prettier watches. And so I want more backlight. I want it to compare with what I might experience with one of the other technologies because that's what I enjoy. That's what I like using, but also because no other reviewers are doing battery testing for higher level backlights. It comes out of the box at 60%. This thing can go a lot brighter. So why not use it and then be able to gauge what the backlight impact would do to battery life. This is what we're doing here. And then obviously when comparing these two, when comparing the Epix versus the Phoenix 7, you have an AMOLED screen that is literally 10 times brighter than any transflective. 10 times, a multiple of 10 brighter than a transflective. So the visibility, the readability, the, the brilliance is, is gonna be significantly more. So having it compare head to head with a 60% backlight on a, on a watch that has the capability to go up makes a big difference. Now think about this as well. At 20%, based on basic light reading testing I did, it, you know, it's gonna be about 17 lumens. So 17 lumens at 20%, and if you compare that to other competitive watches on the market, that's below average from what you would get out of the box with some of the others. And the Phoenix line is one of the few watches that has full customization. You can jack up the backlight if you want. So why not take advantage of making it at least a little bit brighter than some of the others on the market. So the grit, the Polar Grit X is at 27 lumens. The, the simple cheap Forerunner 245 from Garmin is at 25 lumens. The Suunto 9 is at about 30 lumens. The 945 can go up to 145 lumens because it just had some sort of screen that was different than all the others. So even out of the box at 20%, it's at 28 lumens. The Vertix 2 was, was, was what I felt like, and other reviewers sort of agreed, was a very dim watch. The Vertix 2 has a fixed backlight setting, and it only goes up to about 12 to 15 lumens. So it's a very dim experience, and that's something that can be felt. So again, that's why we're doing this testing. Number one, to be able to see the battery life impact of having the backlight turned up a little bit higher. Number two, because we live in a world where, you know, there's a lot of prettier watches on there, so why not be able to take advantage of the ability to turn up the backlight and have a more brilliant experience with the watch? And then I just say number three is because I need a backlight. I enjoy a backlight. I appreciate a backlight. So all my testing has always been at 60% backlight from the Garmin watches that have the capability to go up. So all that being said, I so, I'm sorry if there was a miscommunication about having the backlight always on. It was not that way. I've done a lot of testing and I know that you don't do that. Um, 
60%. So let's talk about testing parameters. So again, testing parameters are just the same as what I shared yesterday, except for I'm gonna speak it a little bit more clearly, hopefully this time. Obviously the specs on these is with the Phoenix 7, this is the solar, but I am not getting much solar exposure. So I'm sort of dismissing that as a, as a function of what the battery life could be. I probably in the last 28 hours, maybe got an hour or an hour and a half of sun exposure. But a lot of this has just been under a shirt sleeve and it wasn't cloudy today, but either way, the Phoenix 7 out of the box with the regular Phoenix 7 is 18 days of battery life. And with the solar it increases it to 22 days of battery life, which is a significant improvement over the solar capabilities of the Phoenix 6 solar series of watches. So they've, they've made, it, made it a lot more impactful. The Epics, on the other hand, if you have the always on display where it's sort of dimly lit and then you do a wrist raise gesture and it goes fully lit, that's six days of battery life. And if you have it just where your wrist gesture actually illuminates the whole thing and it's you know completely off the rest of the time, 16 days of battery life. So in comparing these two watches, now you have a watch that is actually 10 times brighter and more brilliant with better colors and better, what I would consider better overall experience. And it's somewhat similar in the, you know, ba battery life spectrum. And then the question is, is what if we turn up the battery life to the backlight to a little bit brighter? How would it compete head to head with the Epics? Because all I'm doing right now is competing or reviewing the different aspects of the Phoenix 7, Phoenix 7 versus the Epics sort of head to head in a bunch of different things. So the test parameters again, the Phoenix 7 set to 60% wrist, uh, 60% backlight with wrist gesture is the only way it gets illuminated as you see it there. Eight second timeout for the timeout on that. The Epic set to always on. It is set to medium brightness, which they consider two thirds bright, which I would say is 67%. The do not disturbs are on both from 12 to seven. I'm wearing these 24 seven, all settings are the same. When you get a notification on either of these watches, it automatically illuminates the watch. The last you know, 28 hours at a 20 minute, 20 minute GPS exercise and one hour and 15 minute workout. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a look at the results and then come back together and talk about it if I still have any subscribers left after the uproar that occurred yesterday. All right, so here you have it folks, the head to head comparison of the battery life with all the test parameters that I spoke and hopefully it was really clear this time. So after 28 days, actually a little bit long, or 28 hours, a little bit longer now that I've done some video work in between, we can see that the battery drain is 15%. So on the Phoenix 7, Battery drain 15% after 28 hours, and I'll put in the, you know, below just what that equates to in exact terms um, for batteries, estimated days of battery life. And then on the Epics, we have 82%, so 18% drain, so 15% and 18% on the differences between the two. You can obviously see they all have the same capabilities, and you see the brilliance of the screen, and the overall experience of AMOLED versus the memory and pixel transflective. So there you have it, folks. There is the updated sort of summary. We have 18% drain and 15% drain. The comparison of the two, let's talk about it in summary. So there you have it. The Phoenix 7 is doing better. It might have been that extra long timeout that I had incorrectly set. 14 or 15% drain over the period of time, which relates to about eight and a half days. And the Epix, 18% drain, which relates to about six and a half days. So that's what it would be if you have the 60% set and you're using the Epix always on. If you just sort of compare it head to head with what the battery life would be at a different brightness level than maybe some other reviewers might be doing out there. And you know, taking full advantage of the capabilities of the watch to be able to increase or control some of the backlight. So I'm gonna to continue to wear them, continue to do it side by side. One thing I forgot to mention in the testing parameters, pulse ox is turned on, but only at night. Um, we're gonna continue to test these side by side for a period of days so we can see a more extensive, you know, benefit or more extensive battery life comparison. That'll be in the final review for the Phoenix 7 and also the final review for the Epics. So with that, it's a figure hunter. Thanks so much for watching.